Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video, I will be trying out one of Moulds and Shapes' new designs, the heart-shaped tray moulds, right in time for Valentine's Day. To create my two interlocking heart-shaped trays, I'm going to be using epoxy resin and the sinking white method to create some beautiful patterns. If that sounds interesting to you, stay tuned and enjoy the video. Before I could begin, I needed to find out the volume of this beautiful tray mould. And so before I started filming, I filled it with water to find out its volume, which was approximately 300 millilitres. So then I could mix up my 300 millilitres of epoxy resin. And today I'm using Art Pro resin from Resin Pro. In the little jug, I've got 30 grams of resin. And that's going to be used for the sinking white effect. So what I'm doing now is preparing it in advance so that that's all ready. I'm adding six drops of sinking white alcohol ink from Let's Resin. And also I'm going to be adding four drops of white liquid pigment from Resin Pro. I'll put the links in the description. Once I'd finished adding all the white pigment, I gave it a really good stir and then poured it all into a disposable piping bag. I find the easiest way to do that is to open up the bag a bit and place it into a cup so it's easy to pour the pigmented resin directly into the middle of the bag and that way you don't get it going all up the sides and making a horrible mess with it. And then when you've got all your resin in, you can remove the bag, give it a twist and it's all ready for when you need it. So I decided I wanted my fancy patterned effects in the larger heart mould. So that's with the one I'm starting with. And I'm just pouring the clear epoxy resin into the mould, not all the way to the top, about two or three millimetres away from the top. In fact, I added too much and had to spoon some out. And the reason I needed to leave some space is because when I've finished and the patterned layer is cured, I want to add a black layer on top which will be the black background so I needed space for that you've got to kind of plan in advance with it. if you're new to epoxy resin you will soon discover that everything needs to be planned in advance so yeah that's what I was doing there here you can see me using my micro brush just to run it around the edges of the inside of the mould because that's where you tend to get bubbles trapped. So I was just trying to make sure there weren't any bubbles there. I'm also using my heat gun a little bit to make sure there's no bubbles before I start with the pattern process. The micro brush I use is made of plastic and I've actually pulled the little end off. It has a little fuzzy end on it and they come off really easy. And basically it works like a cocktail stick would work, but it's not as sharp. These moulds are very special moulds. They're so good and I do treat my moulds and shapes moulds with a lot of care because I don't want to scratch them. So yeah, that's why I was using the plastic micro brush. And yeah, here I am now just spooning some out because there was just too much in there. For this method, I'm using alcohol inks to create the colour. My two alcohol inks which I've chosen are from Let's Resin and it's the peach red colour, which is this one you can see now. And also, I think the other one was dark magenta. If it wasn't, I'll put it up on the screen because I'm just trying to remember as I speak. So yeah, I'm using the peach red around the outside, just adding a drop at a time until that outside is all covered. Then I did the exact same thing with the dark magenta all the way around. But when I say all the way around, I mean the outside edge where the, the, it's not going to be interlocking. As you can see, I don't really need to explain it, do I? <laughs> you can see that that part where the smaller heart is going to fit into the larger heart, 
I haven't done any pigment there. So yeah, that's just the way I'd planned it to work. And so once all of the dark magenta was in, I did a final layer of pigment with the peach red again, just in the same place around the edge. I decided to let all those inks settle and find their own place for a little while while I started on the smaller heart. Now for the smaller heart, my plan was to kind of keep it a little bit more simple because the large heart would be quite busy and I didn't want too much going on so I wanted to have kind of an interesting effect in the small heart but not too overpowering so the way I decided to do it was to separate my leftover resin into three smaller pots and I left a little bit of clear in the large pot I used three colours which were the same colours that would be in the big one but this time I'm using mica powder instead of alcohol inks. I'm using Arteza's mica powder and it is the light plum, the bubblegum glow and the black. Once I'd mixed those up, I just put them to the side and went back to the larger heart. I didn't want to leave those alcohol inks resting on the surface of the resin for too long because they can kind of form a film. I've got to say the Let's Resin alcohol inks don't do that too much, but I didn't want to risk it. Uh, in the past, I have found if I leave it for a long time and then try to manipulate it, it kind of starts cracking and going a bit strange because it's started to kind of seal up on the surface it's quite strange with alcohol ink so yeah i've snipped the end off that little cone with my pigment in and just enough to make a small um you know stream of resin as it comes out do it as sm cut it off a small amount at a time until you get the thickness coming out that you want you don't want to you know cut off a really big piece straight away because you might find it's just coming out too fast but I was happy with it the way it was so I just carried on and as you can see I'm kind of doing it in a diagonal pattern it's hard to explain it but luckily you can see what I'm doing so it's not too much of an issue so once I'd finished piping out all that white, I took my micro brush again and started dragging gently through the resin. Just at the surface, don't touch the mould. Try not to touch the mould. It's really, it helps if you don't do that. Uh, yeah, try to keep it just going through the, enough to go through the white that you've just added. And I'm keeping in the shape of the heart and just dragging through kind of perpendicular to the shape of the lines the way I added them. So it's kind of going through and forming a pattern as you go through. I really find this method so exciting because you never know quite how it's going to look when you take it out the mould and look at the other side. But the effect is always so magical. OK, we're well back to the small heart again. First of all, I decided to add a black border. I wasn't sure afterwards whether that had been a good idea or not, but you can make your own mind up on that. And then I added a small amount of clear resin into the centre of the heart. And then I alternated the bubblegum glow and the light plum. I just kept pouring one inside the other until it was almost full and then when the heart shape was almost full I added a little bit of the clear resin in the middle. And once I'd finished pouring I took my heat gun and just gently gave it a little heat all over to pop any bubbles that happened to be there and I also did a little bit of what would you call it titivation <laughs> on the large heart just to make sure I liked the pattern and then I left it secure later that day when it had firmed up quite a lot enough to add the next layer of resin that's what I did I mixed up about 80 millilitres of resin and added some black opaque pigment from resin pro and just added it over the top of that large heart 
This step isn't essential, it's just that I like to have a black background when I'm using this method. I think it really makes the white show up so nicely. Right then, the next day when it was all cured, I couldn't wait to get these out of the mould. And it was a bit bittersweet, actually. <laughs> I absolutely loved the large one, but the smaller one, well, you'll see what happened. But, you know, these things, I don't give up. I did get around the problem, but let's, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's have a look first. So it actually looks nice from the back. But here's the front. Now you can see there's a problem, isn't there? <laughs> Either I added too much of the, you know, the pinky white pigment to the resin or I didn't mix it enough. It was one of the two and it had lots of tiny little white spots. But I will go back to that and show you what I did about it. Let's have a look at the big one. Are you ready? <laughs> let's just take off those bits right let's have a look whoa what do you think can the first thing i noticed was that brownie color in there and that was from i believe it was from the dark magenta alcohol ink it something went strange with that but i didn't mind it it was fine uh, yeah, it just went that muddy kind of colour. But look at these details. Isn't it amazing what happens with that technique? I really do love it. So, yeah, I was happy with the large heart and I needed to go back to the smaller one and see if I could rectify the problem. So, as usual... <laughs> I forgot to press record. I thought I was filming and I wasn't. So I've already done most of what I did to rectify the problem. And um, yeah, I went to stop it recording when I thought I'd finished and realised it hadn't recorded anything. So I've just done a bit more just to demonstrate. I had a little bit of pigment on that silicon mould and I sprayed some isopropyl alcohol onto the pigment and mixed it up and all I'm doing is trying to colour match the bits where the white spots are and just dabbing some of the pigment over the top of all those little white spots which I wasn't happy about <laughs> and you know just to try and disguise them and it did actually work quite well you'll see soon. Now, as you can see, where I've added the pigment over the spots, it sticks out like a sore thumb, but that's okay because I'm going to be covering it all with resin and you won't see that after I've, you know, covered it with resin. But before I covered it with resin, I wanted to add my border, which I used an alcohol, not an alcohol, <laughs> a acrylic ink pen. And if they've still got them, I'll put a link to that in the description. And it's like a pinky colour and I just made a border around the outside edge to try and form a little bit of contrast and then I coloured in all around the outside as well and when I'd finished colouring all the outside in and left it to dry I took it outside and added a layer of spray varnish to you know to protect all of that before I added my resin top coat Right then, because I was in quite a rush, uh, I was reaching the deadline for having my video ready. <laughs> I just didn't have time to use epoxy resin and wait for it to cure before taking photographs and getting my video uploaded. I just didn't have the time. And so I'm using UV resin for this. I wouldn't recommend using UV resin to do this. It was only because I was running out of time. The reason I wouldn't recommend using large amounts of UV resin in this way is because it's quite expensive to use it in you know, large quantities like that. And the other thing is what happened is as because I'd only just demolded that heart and it wasn't fully cured, it takes a few days to be fully cured, the, it bent a little bit. As it went under the lamp to cure the UV resin, it kind of distorted under as the resin was curing, it caused it to curve up a little bit. 
So yeah, that wasn't great either, but I just needed to get it finished to show you. Um, uh, yeah, it needed doing because I'd put all that, you know, pigmented alcohol ink on the surface. And as I said before, it stuck out like a sore thumb. But adding the resin really did, you know, stop that from happening. And you couldn't tell I'd done anything to it. After I'd finished applying the UV resin, I put it under the, the UV lamp for around five minutes and it was ready. And as you can see, it's a lot better than it was. It's not perfect. I went over the edge a little bit at the top right hand side. So that needed sorting out. But it kind of helped with the problem that I'd been having, didn't it? Those white spots aren't as apparent anymore and I'm glad in a way that it happened because I could show you a way of rectifying the problem. Okay, and so now everything's finished. Let's have a closer look. I'm going to focus on the star of the show because as you can probably tell, I'm not so pleased with the smaller heart. Yeah, <laughs> the big heart stole the show. And look at those details. I just love the way that sinking white creates such amazing feathered effects. And by now you're probably thinking, how am I going to use these trays? Well, I thought they would be perfect as wine coasters. So I've used one of them for my bottle of wine and the glasses fit on the other one. And I think they look very romantic for a special Valentine's meal. So we've reached the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I will see you again next time. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.